All right, meets. How's it going? In today's video, it's episode nine of Lord of the Clans by Christy Gold. So let's go. Thrall had never been so bloody hungry in his entire life. He still much preferred freedom to captivity, but he was now very aware that he had almost no survival skills whatsoever. He couldn't even catch squirrels. However, after several days of pushing through forest and undergrowth, Thrall suddenly found the sweet scent of roasting meats fill his nostrils. It was a good thing he didn't allow his hunger to completely overcome his caution though, because as he moved to the edge of the forested area, he then saw dozens of humans joyfully preparing a feast. Thrall started salivating. They had breads, jams, cheese, but alongside all the glorious foodstuffs was a scene of happiness and contentment, and Thrall wanted nothing more than to belong here. Alas, he did not. He was an orc, a monster, a green-skinned son of a bitch. So he just sat and watched as the humans feasted and danced the night away. Eventually, the moons rose, furniture and plates and cutlery were gathered up, and the humans all buggered off into their dwellings. And finally, Thrall got up and moved with skillful silence towards the village. His sense of smell had always been acute, but it was hyper-focused now due to him being absolutely starving. He made his way from window to window, reaching in and snatching any food he could find, making sure not to take too much from any one household though. However, through one window, Thrall witnessed children sleeping on straw mattresses. Two boys and one blonde little girl, the sight of which caused a sharp punch in Thrall's fields. He was immediately transported back to the day he'd first seen Teretha, as she'd smiled broadly and waved at him. This girl looked so much like her. Suddenly, a harsh noise then startled Thrall, and he turned just in time to see a four-legged beast charging at him. Was this a wolf? It had pointy ears, sharp teeth, looked a bit like pictures of wolves he'd seen. Human voices then filled the air, crying in alarm. The little girl was now awake and staring at him through the window. Monster! The hateful word wounded Thrall, but he knew he couldn't just stand around crying about it. However, turning on his heel, he then realised he was surrounded by frightened villagers. I mean you no harm. It talks! It's a demon! These weren't his enemies, he thought. They may fear and hate him, but they were simple farmers, living their simple lives with their simple families. And so, Thrall took advantage of the shock in the crowd and cheesed it. The men did not pursue, just as Thrall had expected. They just wanted to be left in peace. But still, Thrall ran for quite a while. He again ran until he was physically incapable of running any further, and then collapsed and passed out. A short while later, something prodded Thrall in the belly, stirring him awake, and as he opened his eyes, he saw several angry orc faces. He then tried to get up, but the orcs wouldn't let him, and then one of them got all up in his face grill. <coughs> Thrall had no idea what was just said, so he just shook his head. And the orc, even more angrily, then grabbed Thrall's ears. <coughs> I'm not deaf. Human, you not speak orcish. I speak a little. My name is Thrall. The orc stared for a moment, but then burst out laughing. Human that looks like orc. Kill him. No. Despite the danger and urgency of the situation, there was one thing that filled Thrall with hope. These orcs were fierce. They weren't sitting around in their own shit. One fine Grom Hellscream. At that, the big angry orc froze. Why fine? You said kill? From human? No. Cam's mad. Orcs. Me want orcs. Grom help. Thrall then waited, hoping his broken orcish should manage to convey what he wanted. A slightly smaller orc then piped up, which the leader responded to heatedly, and they argued for a bit. And then, the big angry one turned back to Thrall. Drag say maybe. Maybe you see Hellscream. If you're worthy. Come. The orcs then hauled Thrall to his feet, and started to march him forward, prodding him with a spear, urging him to pick up the pace. But, despite all of that, Thrall still couldn't help but smile. He remained silent the entire journey, listening to the conversation between the orcs escorting him. His orcish wasn't brilliant, but he understood enough. They spoke of the listlessness that seemed to have fallen upon some of their kin, and like Thrall, they weren't big fans of it. They spoke of their warlord, Hellscream, with words of praise and awe. And they spoke of Thrall, wondering if he was some kind of spy, leading a cowardly ambush. When that was suggested, the group came to a halt, with the big angry orc approaching Thrall and thrusting a blindfold at him. So Thrall obediently put it on. He trusted these orcs. 
Not like he had any other choice, anyway. Eventually, after several more paragraphs, Thor's blindfold was removed, and he can now see that he was in a large underground cave. However, none of the orcs standing around looked even remotely chieftain-like. Said you'd take me to Hellscream. I don't see him. You do not see him, but he is present. He sees you. This new orc, almost as tall as Thrall but without the bulk, approached. He looked old and tired, but carried himself in a manner that demanded respect, which Thrall decided to give. This may be, but I wish to speak with him, not merely bask in his unseen presence. You have spirit, fire, that is well. I am Isgar. Advisor to the great chieftain Hellscream. My name is... You are known to us, Thrall of Dernholt. Many have heard of Lieutenant General Blackmore's pet orc. A growl escaped Thrall's throat. He wasn't going to lose his composure, but he wasn't a big fan of hearing that term come from the mouth of one of his own people. We haven't seen you fight, of course. Orcs aren't allowed to watch gladiator battles. But while you were finding glory in the ring, your brethren were beaten and abused. I received none of the glory. I was a slave, owned by Blackmore. And if you do not believe that I despise him, then see this. Thrall twisted round to show everyone his back, and there was an awkward silence for a moment, until the entire cave erupted in laughter. There is nothing to see, Thrall of Dernhold. Thrall then realised why everyone was laughing. The clerics and their healing salves had done a little bit too good a job. Not a single scar remained on his back. <sighs> Look, I was a thing. A piece of property. Kept in a cell and brought out for their amusement. The scars on my body are not visible. I realize that now. There are scars you cannot see that run much deeper. I escaped, was thrown into the camps, and then I came here to find Hellscream. Now I'm beginning to doubt he even exists. Perhaps it was too much to hope for. To find an orc that still exemplifies who I understood our people to be. A couple of murmurs from the bystanding orcs. What do you understand our people to be, then? Orc who bears the name of slave. Strong. Cunning. Powerful. With spirits that cannot be quenched. Let me see Hellscream, and he will know that I am worthy. We will be the judge of that. This guy then raised his hand. And three orcs stepped forward. These are our three finest warriors. They are, as you said, strong, cunning, powerful. They fight to kill or die, unlike your gladiator battles. Your play acting will not serve you here. Only real skill will save you. If you survive, Hellscream may grant you an audience. Or he may not. He will see me. You'd best hope so. Begin. <laughs>